Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now before I get into the recipe, I just wanted to wish all the fathers and father figures out there a happy Father's Day. I want to thank my dad, my uncles, my grandfathers, and my great-grandfathers for always being there for me, giving me great advice, and just being overall great people. So to all the dads, the father figures, the uncles, the brothers, and whoever out there, I want to wish you guys a happy Father's Day and I hope you guys enjoy this special day. To all of you guys, I hope you're spending this day with your fathers or father figures and just eating lots of great food, spending quality time together because as we know in today's times, life is very short. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing my recipe for lamb curry. Now in my family, lamb curry or goat curry or duck curry or like those dark meat curries were usually saved for special events or celebrations. So I think today is a pretty special day, so I'm going to be sharing my lamb curry recipe. I already shared a version on my channel a while back but in today's video I'm gonna be sharing on how to make that lamb curry really dark really spicy and just really rich in color and flavor so I, if you guys want to see how to put together this lamb curry today please keep on watching you are truly gonna enjoy this one making the lamb curry is pretty simple what I'm gonna do is start with my curry paste so in my bowl I'm going in with some crushed garlic thick leaf thyme as well as some hot pepper and I'm going in with some curry powder as well as my masala. Now the pepper, the garlic, as well as that broad leaf thyme or the thick leaf thyme, I just pound them in my mortar and pestle just to get them crushed up a bit and nice and fine. And once I add in all of my spices, I'm going to go in with a little bit of water and I'm going to mix it up until I get a nice thick paste. Once you're done making your curry paste, you're going to heat some oil in a heavy bottom pot. Today I'm using a cast iron pot, but use anything that has a nice thick heavy bottom. And once you add in the oil, you let it heat up a little bit, you're going to go into that curry paste that we just made. Now, as you guys can see, it is not sizzling up so much. That is a trick that if you don't want your house to smell like curry or have that pungent smell running throughout your house, then do not allow the oil to get too hot and splatter up. Because once it splatters, all of those vapors will get out into the air, and that's what causes the house to smell like curry. So go ahead and just put it in, and it'll come up to temperature as you mix it into the oil. Now once you add in your curry paste, my rule of thumb is to always cook it for about 5-6 to six minutes, until that mixture dries up a little bit and once that oil starts to release back from the mixture. And once you add in your curry paste, you also want to add in a bit of salt. The reason why I always add salt into my curry paste as it fries up is because I like to start building up all of those flavors in the dish and to flavor every single part of it. My mixture has dried up a little bit and as you guys can see all around the edges, the oil has started to release back from the mixture. That's my indication that the mixture has cooked properly and the curry is no longer raw. So at this point, I'm going in with some sliced onions as well as some chopped scallions. Now you see me make curries one of two ways. This is one way and the other way is to put the onions and the scallions in the pot first to fry up in the oil and then you add the curry paste on top. Whatever way you want to do it, feel free to do it as per your preferences. And on top of the scallions, I also went in with a little bit more of my thick leaf thyme. If you don't have this on hand, you can use regular thyme or you can omit it. It's just something I have growing in my garden, that's why I like to add it in. And once your curry paste has fried down a little bit more and the onions have softened, you're going to go in with your lamb meat. Now my lamb meat was washed really well. I washed it with flour, I washed it with some salt. You can even wash it with vinegar or lime juice, whatever way you want to do it. Now it is up to you whether or not you want to steam the meat. If this was fresh meat from the butcher shop, I would have steamed it. But being that it was from my local grocery store and it was just some lamb chops that I was using, and of course I washed it really well, I don't find that I needed to steam it and it didn't have that fresh or that rank taste once it was done cooking. And once you add your lamb into the pot, you're going to go in with a little bit of dried Guyanese thyme. If you don't have Guyanese thyme, use the regular dried American thyme or you can use fresh or you can omit it or use whatever other herbs that you want. I'm also going in with two bay leaves. And as usual, all of my ingredients and the proper measurements will be down in the description box below. And just in case you guys wanted to know, I am using lamb chops today for my lamb curry. I find that it's just an easy piece to use whenever making curries. The reason why I like this cut is because there's not much cleaning to be done on this type of meat. And it also cooks pretty quick compared to other pieces of lamb I've used. Basically, once you add that lamb into the pot, you're going to keep stirring it up and you're going to keep frying it up or bunjaying it in all of those spices until all of the water or the natural juices from the lamb releases from it and then they dry back up and evaporate. That's going to help your curry to have a really nice taste in the end and not taste fresh or rank. Now, I just wanted you guys to take a look at the color that we're achieving on this lamb right now. As you guys can see, it's nice and dark. If you don't like your curry this dark, you can go a little less with your masala. Um, the reason why I went a little heavy with the masala today is because I find that lamb can really hold up to it and being that it's such a dark meat with such a strong taste as well, it really soaks up those curry flavors as well as the masala. 
So the step that I'm doing here is optional. I went in with some more sliced onions and some sliced scallions. And I also went in with some cut pieces of eggplant, also known as bacon, just because I had a few pieces left in my freezer. But if you don't want to add them in, you don't have. Them. So my curry's been bunjing for about 17 minutes at this point. That's how long it took for the lamb to release all of its juices and to dry back up. And once you see that the pan starts to be dry and start to stick at the bottom a bit and the oil starts to release again from the spice mixture, that's your indication that the meat has bunjade properly and it's time to add some water. So I'm going in with some boiling water just so I don't bring down the temperature of the pot. And I'm going to cover my pot now and I'm going to allow it to cook or simmer on a medium to medium low heat until the lamb is nice and soft. Alright guys, so over the duration of the cooking time for the lamb, I went in every couple of minutes just to stir it up and make sure nothing was sticking. If your lamb is taking too long to cook, you can go ahead and add in more water and just keep adding in water until it boils down and the lamb is as soft as you would like. Some people like a chewier piece of lamb or goat if they're cooking it, and some people like it nice and soft. I like mine more on the tender side just because that's what I prefer, but go ahead and cook it as per your own taste and your own preferences. Now my lamb took about 50 minutes to cook, so almost an hour. Yours might take less, yours might take more time. And I had it on about a medium, medium low heat cooking. So I just want to show you one of the pieces of lamb and how soft it is. Once you put it onto a plate and you mash it with that spoon you're using and it shreds up really nice, that's your indication that it's done. So you want to taste it for salt and any other seasonings you may want to add in. And at that point, your curry is done. So once your curry is done, my recommendation is you serve it up hot straight out of the pot and sop it up with a piece of roti or serve it over a bed of jasmine or brown rice. Now this is really good also with potatoes inside. I didn't have potatoes today so I didn't add any in, but just the lamb by itself and all of the flavoring agents that I added in worked perfectly. I also wanted to mention that by adding the bacon in, it also made it a little bit darker just because the bacon still had the skin on. Usually I would peel it, but the piece that I had in the freezer still had the skin on. And that's it guys, the curry is as simple as that. The longest part of this process is really just allowing that meat to soften and for it to get nice and tender. So I have my beautiful spicy lamb curry. I'm gonna sop it up with a piece of oil roti and I'm gonna go along my way right now. I hope you guys go ahead and try this recipe out and I hope lamb. you enjoy it. So while I go ahead and enjoy this lamb curry, I hope you guys finish watching the video and go ahead and give it a try for yourselves. Again, wishing all the fathers out there a happy Father's Day. Enjoy your day. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet. And of course, leave your amazing comments down below and let me know what you guys would like to see next. And I'll see you guys again very soon in my next video. Bye everyone.